Shalom. Um, so I'm gonna try to make this a quicker video. Um, this is just to uh, debunk some of the um, some of the old adage that the Israelites are, you know, uh, these Caucasians, all right? And that, you know, the white man wrote the book Bible and all this stuff, right? So if they did, why would they leave stuff in the scripture that actually show you that the Israelites were black? All right, so let's, I'm gonna start off with, uh, before I go to some scripture, I'm gonna start off with a book. It's called uh, Babylon the Timbuktu. I actually, um, I actually have that book right here. It's called From Babylon to Timbuktu by Rudolf R. Windsor. And I'm gonna just read this passage it's on page 84, all right? And it reads, um, in the year 65 BC, the Roman armies under General Pompey captured Jerusalem, all right? Um, then in 70 AD, so five years later, no, no, not five years later, I'm sorry. So um, this is over a hundred years later, in 70 AD, uh, General Vespasian and his son Titus put an end to the Jewish state with great slaughter. During the period of the military governors of Palestine, many outrages and atrocities were committed against the residue of the people. During the period from Pompey to Julius, it has been estimated that over one million Jews fled into Africa, fleeing from Roman persecution and slavery. The slave markets were full of black Jewish slaves, right? So that tells you that in 70 AD, 70 years after the crucifixion of Christ, that the Southern Kingdom which who lived in Jerusalem, the Southern Kingdom was Judah, Benjamin and Levi. So those three tribes, um, the other tribes were already scattered into other nations and had been taken captive in other captivities and whatnot, and were living as other people. So the other 10 tribe, the other 10 tribes, um, which included uh, Le Levites as well, uh, which were the priests. So they were scattered among all the tribes. So Judah, Benjamin, and Levi were in the southern tribes, and they were the ones who fled into Africa. Uh, I'll show you just a, a picture that I pulled off of uh, Google here. It shows you uh, where we started at in, in Israel and then ended up going into Africa. Um, into where we had been before, you know, uh, we were we were before we were slaves in Egypt. We actually lived in Egypt uh, under an Israelite who was ruling Joseph, right? So, um, and then after Joseph, there was a king who uh, King Ramses or Pharaoh or whatever you want to call him, the leader wanted to put an end to us because we were growing in number and would soon outnumber the Egyptians uh, in that area. So that's why they put us into slavery. One of the reasons why they put us into slavery, actually the main reason they put us into slavery. And that's also in scripture. Uh, so I just wanted to point out a few things. Um, so over, a thousand, uh, over a thousand years, we migrated into different parts of Africa, mainly into West Africa, right? And let me show you this. Well, first, 
let's 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 go into the scriptures and show how our people are actually in the scripture, right? We're gonna we're gonna show this, right? Um, uh, this is um. Uh, this this is a scripture that reads that we actually came from Jerusalem um, because during this time, during those ancient times, most people were brown people, even the Arabs. Uh, the people who changed the color came out of the womb of Rebecca, our foremother, who had Jacob and Esau. So Esau helped change some of the color of people to a red color, peach color, reddish, right? Okay, uh, because in her womb, there were two nations. God said that there will be two nations in her womb, not just two, you didn't, you're not just having two kids, you having two different nations, two type of people who will be separated so from that point on, throughout the scriptures, it's about those two nations and their factions, their children versus each other. And, and other nations in, in the scriptures as well, but the other nations mostly cleaved to Esau and did what he did. Rarely any of them fought Esau because they were all going against Yasharala is Israel, the Israelites, because they knew that we were the chosen seed, right? Against Jacob's kids, Yaakov. All right, so this right here tells you, it says, but Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. All right, okay, so I must try to speed through this. Uh, this is one of the reasons that uh, well, I, I think I, I brought this scripture out in Ezekiel just to show that uh, we were supposed to be under uh, subjection by the heathens for a while because we made the most high upset by not following his commandments and always trying to do what the heathens do. Uh, it says, uh, therefore, thus said the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy, because the first commandment is that he's a jealous God. I have no other gods before him, correct? But he says, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia. Those are the Edomites, Esau's kids. Idumia is just a, a Greek way of saying Edom, Esau's kids, which have appointed my land into their possession. So this is a future prophecy that he's saying that during this time when he gets ready to come back, that Idumia, which have, will, will have his land in their possession with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. So we are the prey. We have been the prey for a, a couple thousand years now. So the Edomites have, have preyed upon us, put us in slavery, murdered uh murdered us experimented on us raped our women done all of these things yet we still have stockholm syndrome for some reason and and think that they can read our scriptures to us and believe what they say but the most High says that he will put his spirit in us and it says uh and i will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them and ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. You know, and this right here is basically future prophecy saying that in, when the second kingdom comes, we will walk in his statutes and, and keep his judgments, follow the commandments, do what we're supposed to do to live righteously in the new kingdom, in the new Jerusalem, right? So let's pull up. Uh, a few things about the scripture that shows that there are black people, so-called black people, because none of us are black. We are colors of brown, shades of brown, just as Adam was formed from the dust of the ground. The digger you deep into the ground, the browner and darker brown it gets. 
This right here is in the New Testament um, in Acts. Uh, Paul wrote Acts. This is, uh, it says in chapter 13, verse 1. Now there was in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger. Well, they say Niger now, um, but it was actually pronounced nigger even back then. If you um, look this up in a um, for pronunciation in a concordance, it will be pronounced nigger. The I would be um, lower and not higher. It wouldn't be I, Niger, it would be nigger. So, um, you know, the, 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 the devils just added a G and turned this word against us. It actually just means dark skinned people. That's what it means. Just dark skinned people. Nigger, just like um, Negro. Negro means black, right? Okay. Uh, Kadar. Kadar is an is a ancient word for dark skinned people. All right. Um, let's show another one. This is Jeremiah 14 and 2. Judah, which is the tribe that the uh, Messiah comes from. Judah mourneth and the gates thereof languish. Remember I said we, the tribe of Judah is the tribe that actually went, uh, fled out of uh, Israel in 70 AD during the Roman persecution when the Romans took Jerusalem, right? They fled out of Jerusalem. So Judah mourneth and the gates thereof languish. They were in mourning. They are black unto the ground. What does that mean? Black into the ground, dark skinned people. That means they're dark brown people. Um, I'm sure if you look this word up in a, a Bible concordance or in the Hebrew text, it will probably say Kadar or something to that effect, meaning dark brown people. But being that it's in English, it says black. All right. So if this was written by white people, why would they say that Judah? the same tribe that the Messiah himself comes from are black. Why would they say that? Okay, let's, let's keep moving. Next scripture. This is Job. We know Job was supposed to be a perfect man. Um, and during this time he was being persecuted by Satan, right? Um, Job 30 and 30 says, my skin is black upon me. His skin, right? He said his skin is black. And my bones are burned with heat. I think at this time he was in a famine state. Now, if you ask some Jewish scholars or some Catholic priests or preachers that have learned from the Catholic church in the first place, I don't care if they Baptist, Protestant, they all learn most of their uh, uh, doctrine from the Catholicism. Um, but if you ask them, they will say, well, no, it was the Jewish people, the white Jews, uh, their skin just turned black in a famine. That's not true. That's not true. If pale people are in a famine state and they just start shriveling up, I don't know if you see seen old pale people, but they don't turn black at all. But if a dark, if a brown person is in a famine state to where they don't eat. They get very dark. Actually, I'll, uh, they could be lighter than this child on the screen right here, and they would turn this dark. They could be light brown and then turn this dark in a famine state. So that debunks that too. Let's move to the next one. This right here is telling you again, all right? So what I did here was I looked this one up, this particular scripture up in what's called the Strong's Concordance, right? This is Lamentations chapter four, verse seven and eight. So this is talking about the Nazarites at this time. And Lamentations, the word Lamentation means to mourn or cry and be sad and whatnot, right? So, um, it says uh, her Nazarites were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. Now, 
a, a, a Caucasian person would say, see, the Nazarites were white. Uh, no, they were more ruddy in body than rubies. Their polishing was of sapphire, right? But then it gets here, it says, their visage is blacker than a coal. So let's, let's see what the word visage means. Visage, a person's face, a person's facial expression, the surface of an object presented to view. So a person's face, their visage is blacker than a coal. So their face is blacker than a coal. Let's go back to that, right? Their face is blacker than a coal. So they were getting dark too during, uh, I think this may have been a famine as well, um, where the Nazarites, uh, they were Israelites who actually grew their hair, like Samson grew their hair out and didn't cut their hair and whatnot. But it says that they were ready. So let me do something right quick. Let's, let's do this right quick. Let's Google, um, I don't know, a ruddy cow. Let's see if it's pale or if it's, let's go to images. All right. Ruddy cow. That's brown. Look brown to me. That's, that's a ruddy cow, right? These are ruddy cows. Look brown. Actually, those are ruddy birds they got on there. Look, these people are ruddy skin. It says ruddy skin color, right? Okay. Um, how about a ruddy dog? Okay, they all look brown to me. They all look brown. Ruddy means red, but it's a reddish brown, not a pinkish. Okay. All right. So let's go back to this scripture. Um, so they were a ruddy brown color and their faces were turning black because of the famine. All right. So I looked this up in the Strong's Concordance. And let me see. Uh, Wider. I wanted to get this. This will show you what the Hebrew word was to sock. So when it says wider, when these white people or people who change things in scripture um, or try to make things in scripture seem something that is not, let's go back to the original. The word is to sock, which means it's a primitive root to glare or be dazzling, it says down here, to be dazzling, be a glow or glow. So it means to glow, it's glow, right? Be dazzling white, but they're not white. They're ruddy brown, their bodies, it says that their bodies were ruddy and their faces were blacker than a coal. All right, so let's, let's keep moving. I'm gonna go to the next scripture. This is Exodus. Um, Okay, so this is where I wanted to prove uh, or show that Moses himself was um, also, first I'm going to show you this. Let's just go to this scripture first. So Moses was mistaken as an Egyptian, right? So when Moses' brother, a half-brother who was an Egyptian, found out that he was an uh, Israelite, that he was a Hebrew, not an Israelite, but a Hebrew, then he kicked him out and Moses fled, right? It says, now the priest Midian had seven daughters. They came and drew water and filled the, the troughs to water their father's flock. The shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and held them, helped them and watered their flock. So when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, how is it that ye are come so soon today? And they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds, right? So they thought he was an Egyptian. So let's look at what the ancient Egyptians look like. Now to this day, of course, you see movies and stuff where they show Egyptians as Caucasian people. That is a farce, right? That's a lie. This is from a tomb somewhere and it shows right here on the right, you see an Egyptian. These are Hebrews picking, these are Israelites or Hebrews picking the wheat. But next to them is an Egyptian, and he's even darker than they are. You see the color distinction? He's even darker than they are. So Moses was mistaken as an Egyptian. 
So Moses was dark. Let's further prove that Moses was brown, right? Okay, so here it says, uh, and the Lord said furthermore to him, this is when, when the Most High was getting Moses to show the Pharaoh that, the, that Moses had a living God, not a statue, not something they pray to and, and, and give alms to and nothing happens, but a living God, the actual God that created the earth, the Most High, Yah, right? It says that they may believe in the Lord, Yah, of their fathers, the Yah of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that had appeared unto thee. And the, and the Lord said, furthermore unto him, put now thine hand into thy bosom, meaning put your hand into your garment or in your shirt, hide your hand up there by your chest. So he probably had on some kind of garment where, where he could stick his hand in, like a robe or something, right? I think the Egyptians did wear that kind of stuff. So, and then he says, and he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, his hand was leprous as snow. What color is snow? It's white, right? Leprous means pale or without color, right? Leprous people are without color, correct? So his hand came out without color. And that was supposed to be something that the Pharaoh would be like, wow, how did he change his color from brown to pale? How did he do that? And then he said, put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as to his other flesh, meaning it went back brown. It went back to the dark color that it was. OK, so that's showing another Hebrew that was actually brown. Right. And this is the uh, Old Testament. We showed in the New Testament that Paul was born. Uh, 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 that these guys were called nigger. Um, and then in the Tanakh in the old, old Testament showing that Judah was actually black visage face faces are blacker than the cold. So here we are new Testament again, Paul was also mistaken for an Egyptian. Let's read this for the multitude of the people follow after crying away with him. And as Paul was be, was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, may I speak unto thee, who said, canst thou speak Greek? So the captain was like, you speak Greek? So the captain was a Roman, right? The captain was, he was a Roman. He, he spoke Greek. He didn't know that Paul could speak Greek. They about to take him to the castle, right? So Paul said, Art, no, then the, then the captain says, art not thou that Egyptian, which before these days made us an uproar and led us out into the wilderness, 4,000 men that were murderers. So he's thinking that this, that, that Paul is some Egyptian captain or general or something that led some men into a, a fight against the Romans. So if he was thought of as an Egyptian or by sight, he looks like an Egyptian, then that means that Paul was a brown man. Paul was a brown man. Let's go, let's go back to see what the Egyptian looked like again. Dark brown, right? If you look right here, you see that afro. I mean, they had. I mean, that pick. They had afros, right? Look at that pick. That's an ancient pick. That's an ancient pick. One side finer, finer combs. One side bigger combs, right? Wow, look at that. That's for afros. That's not for stringy hair. All right. So let's 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 keep going. A couple more scriptures. Then I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm gonna end this. Um, now we are supposed to be the Most High's people, right? But we were disobedient. We were disobedient as He was leading us out of Egypt. This is what He said: "For Thou art an holy people." Holy means separate. The word holy means separate separate a holy separate people unto the lord thy god the lord thy god have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth right we are special people we dominate just about anything we get our hands on if we had the power that we supposed to have, we will be ruling this earth. 
we will be ruling all these nations righteously. And that's what's going to happen eventually. Right? So at this point, we weren't uh we weren't a lot of people. It says the Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were more in number than any people, but you were the fewest of all people. Even though we grew in number in Egypt, we were still the fewest of all people. We were Hebrews. You know, but because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had swore unto your fathers who are Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now, I'm going to do another video on uh, the curses, where we are to this day, but uh, I'm just going to leave that, leave that there. Um, so this is, uh, the last person that will show color that I'm going to show, right? Which is Christ. So this is Daniel. Daniel was a seer. The most High gave him visions to see the future, Daniel, Ezra, and other prophets, right? And some, a lot of those prophecies have come to pass. A lot of them have been coming to pass in the past 10 years, right? So Daniel says, Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of euphaz. Christ had a girdle, a girded belt, sort of like a, um, a wrestler's belt. Like you see a wrestler win or a boxer win a, a match and he gets a belt, sort of like that. Um, that's probably where they got it from anyway. So six, this is Daniel 10, uh, verse five and six. So six, it says, his body also was like the barrel and his face as the appearance of lightning, meaning he was glowing. There's that glowing again, just like it said the Nazarites were, right? Even though they say a white. Lightning is white too, right? It was glowing. I'm sure it's probably the same Hebrew word to sock in the Hebrew language instead of in the English. But anyway, um, and his eyes as lamps of fire and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass. Polished brass. Now this color right here says his body also was like the barrel. So let's look this up right quick. Cause I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Let's let's look this word up. Let's see what color barrel is. Now I said his arms and his body should be the same color as his arms and feet, right? Should be the same color. Barrel. Let's see images. So barrel is like a a gold color, right? Okay. All right. So now let's see what, what else Christ looked like. We're going to go to John the Revelator, right? So barrel is like a goldish color, right? Which is brass is, is a goldish color, but let's see how deep, deeply brass that was right and in the midst of the seven candlesticks one like unto the son of man son of man is the most uh, uh christ yahweh shy clothed with a garment down to the foot and gird about the paps with a golden girdle there it is again that belt that golden belt his head and his hairs were white like wool now it says white like wool but then it says as white as snow so white as snow is the color which means he his he was in his age, and then wool is the texture. Only people on earth that have woolly hair are black people. Let's see if we can look that up right quick. Woolly haired people images. They all look like brown people to me. Willie hair, Willie hair. 
They got Albert Einstein on here, but that's not woolly hair. We know that's not woolly hair. It just says top 12 famous people with bad hair. Okay. But anyway, so we know this is woolly hair, right? Woolly hair people. So he had woolly hair. And then it says, and his feet like unto fine brass. There's brass again. So a golden color, but as if they burned in a furnace. So the, the golden color and it was burned in a furnace. That's dark brown. Right? That's dark brown. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And Christ was from the tribe of Judah or Yehuda. Right? So we know that those people, uh, the Romans and the Greeks, had us in captivity, right? Um, and that's why a lot of our people think like, they have Stockholm syndrome, even from generations ago, and they'll stick to the heathen. Even here it says, the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians. So we were sold to so-called Caucasians back then, right? We were sold to them back then, that ye might remove them far from their border, and they were removed from their homeland back then. Right. So I just wanted to point this out because we are the people of the book. And and I'm going to tell you what God thinks or the most high thinks of these other people. Right. So this is the prophet Ezra. And he was talking to the most high and the most high was showing him things uh, and and telling him things. And he was asking questions and getting his questions answered. Right. So. um this is in the Apocrypha, the books that were taken out of the 1611 King James Version of the Bible. Um, in uh, Second Esdras, chapter 6. All right, so let's, let's read this. All this I have spoken before you, O Lord, because you have said that it was for, for us that you created this world, meaning for the Israelites that you created this world. As for the other nations... Okay, this is not the KJV version, but I'm going to read it anyway. As for the other nations that have descended from Adam, you have said that they are nothing. They are nothing, right? We are the people of the book. And that they are like spittle. And you have compared their abundance to a drop from a bucket. That's That actually, he's speaking about uh, another verse. I believe it's in Malachi or in Jeremiah. Um, where it says this, he said the the Lord said that they are nothing. So we are the people of the book. That's why we are separate. We are holy. We are the people, right? So this is where we ended up. This is a 1700 map, I believe it's 1741 map of West Africa. When we migrated, um, some of us migrated into Europe. That's why there were Moors, but some of us were in North Africa and were taken into the Arab slave trade. Their slave trade has been going on, was going on way longer than the European slave trade, right? And it's still going on, actually. They're still putting people in slavery from this region, from Niger, from Nigeria. Those places actually have the word nigger in it, right? Niger, Nigeria, they're still taking these people and putting them into slavery. You can look it up yourself. Look up Niger slavery or uh, slavery in Libya, in North Africa. Well, anyway, so this is the coast of West Africa. This area was called Guinea at the time, and they named it, the Europeans named it Negro land, meaning black land. Negro is just the Spanish word for black. Correct. So where did the Spanish come from? It didn't come from South America. It came from Spain and Portugal. Those people spoke Spanish, right? They were the Europeans that actually made the South Americans speak Spanish. So that's why it's called Negro land. 
And that's a whole nother issue. I would do another video um, on that where the Portuguese actually were shipping um, the, the black Jews or the people from Judah that migrated into their land. They were shipping them down here to West Africa to an island called St. Thomas. I think it's over here. So, um, and then also here to uh, Benin and Ghana, which is in this area. So I'm gonna zoom in. I got a picture that zoomed in already into this area. If you look across here, it says Gold Coast. And right here, this is the Slave Coast. This is um, modern day um, Ghana and Benin. This was considered the Slave Coast. The, door, the gate of no return is on this coast. You can look it up. The door of no return, a gate of no return, and you'll see the statues of um, slave boys with chains on their necks, yokes of iron on their necks, which is stated in Deuteronomy 28. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 28, I believe it's uh, verse 42. Um, it's in the 40s, something like that. So this, what I wanted to show, it says the kingdom of Judah. This is the proof people don't believe that uh, the Israelites were in Africa. Yes. I mean, actually, the land of Canaan, which, is, which was called Israel, was Africa. The Horn of Africa is Africa. Israel is North Africa. They just separated it and uh, called it uh, Israel because the Most High called it Israel. That he took, had the Israelites take the land of Canaan at that point in time. So yeah, that, that was still Africa at that time. And our people still dealt with Africans, even from the time before we went into slavery in Egypt. We were in Egypt already. We were living there. So why would we think today, this is just a question, that the real Jews, or the real people of the Southern Kingdom, which was called, which they considered themselves Jews or Yehuda, there was no J in that, in that era. Their J came in the 1600s. But why would we think that they were pale people who lived in that land? And I just showed you biblical proof, and I just showed you um, proof out here in the world. Why would we think that those people are the real Jews? When they call themselves Jewish, that means you're trying to be like something, ish. Just think about it. The devil always put things in our face and we never see it because it's right there in our face. We just believe what the fuck ever. And with that, I'm gonna close out. Now I say Shalom.